Today we're talking about the Tesla Model 3 and why you should not buy one in 2020. We all know that the Model 3 has been out for around three years or so, and Tesla has done periodic updates on the car, but they don't do those every year updates like most manufacturers do. Instead, when they want to change something on the car, they just update it as soon as they can. For example, from the beginning, the Model 3 has shipped with four USB-A ports, two in the front and two in the rear. Well, then the Model Y came out, and that car came out with two USB-C ports in the back, and then one in the front and one USB-A port in the rear, but the Model 3 was still shipping with those four USB-A ports. Well, there was no announcement or anything, or no one really knew when they were gonna update this, but then we started seeing Model 3s being produced, with the same ports as the Model Y. So they actually updated that on the Model 3, didn't really tell anyone, and they did that little update like that. Which brings us to the first reason you should not buy a Model 3 in 2020, the heat pump. Electric cars are notoriously bad in colder climates, with people estimating that around 40% of your range is lost pretty much immediately in a Model 3 if you're in a cold climate. Well, in the new Model Y, Tesla added something revolutionary, the heat pump. Now, essentially, the heat pump is just a more efficient heating system that can heat the interior of the car much more efficiently than the Model 3 can. And at this point, the Model Y is the only Tesla that actually has this, and it's a vast improvement in colder climates, makes it much more efficient to heat the car, and it's actually the best of all the cars right now because even the Model S and X have not been updated to have this extra heat pump. With the Model 3 and the Model Y sharing around 70% of the same parts, most people are expecting that Tesla will indeed add this heat pump to the Model 3. And it would be an update just like those USB-C ports. We wouldn't know when it was coming and then all of a sudden it would just be there in the new Model 3s. And we assume that Tesla will be adding this because it overall makes the car's performance better and it just makes it more efficient. And I'm assuming it's easier for them to just produce one heat pump for both cars as opposed to the heat pump for the Model Y and then the heating system for the Model 3. So in a bit, we'll talk about some more smaller upgrades like that that we expect to be added to the Model 3, but we can't talk about things we're expecting to be added to the Model 3 without talking about battery day. Tesla's battery day is coming up on September 22nd. It's been hyped up by Elon Musk for almost like a year now, maybe even longer, and it has been delayed by a few months, but it's a shareholder meeting where they're going to announce some very exciting things about batteries. There are a number of innovations we expect to hear from Tesla about on battery day, the first being the million mile battery. First off, in theory, the battery should last over a million miles, which would equate to around 16 years of ownership, making it far superior to gasoline equivalent cars. We're also expected to hear about Tesla's Roadrunner project, which is rumored to get the price of batteries down to $100 per kilowatt hour. That's far cheaper than it is now, and $100 is that magic number because that's where you could get gasoline equivalent cars and electric vehicles to be the same price. Right now, battery costs are what make electric cars more expensive than gas cars. So this could drastically decrease the price of the Model 3, which would allow more people to buy them. And Tesla is not afraid to drop the prices of their cars at any time if they can do so. I mean, just about a month ago, they dropped the price of the Model 3, and this didn't correlate with decreased demand or anything. So we assume that their production costs got a little bit lower, they were able to optimize certain things and then pass those savings on to the customer because even Elon Musk himself has said the main thing that bothers him about Teslas are that they're too expensive. Another element of battery production we expect to hear about is Tesla lessening or eliminating the need for cobalt in their batteries. Cobalt is a necessary element in lithium ion batteries that is notoriously hard to mine and also creates incredibly terrible labor conditions. So Tesla is trying to ultimately eliminate the need for cobalt in their batteries to reduce the amount of pollution that they cause actually creating the cars themselves. And then of course, eliminate the need for chemicals that are only gained with terrible labor conditions. And then we expect to hear about the dry electrode technology that Tesla acquired when they bought Maxwell Technologies. This technology could allow Tesla to get more range out of the same size battery packs that are already in all of their cars. So not only could they take the car as it's currently designed, replace the batteries with that new battery technology and get more range out of it, but they could make a slightly bigger battery that would get drastically more range than we've seen in the Model 3 up to this point. And then of course that increased range battery could be cheaper than it is to buy a Model 3 now. All this to say, at some point in the near future, the Model 3 is going to be able to get significantly cheaper, allowing it to sit right in the price range of other vehicles in its class. The battery will have more range, allowing you to go on road trips and not need to charge or charge less. There may be less need or no need for cobalt in your battery, allowing for your battery to be more sustainably sourced, and that battery itself could last up to a million miles or more, allowing it to just add so much value and allowing your car to last for so much longer. When Tesla first 
first announces these technologies, I'm personally expecting it'll probably show up in their stationary storage like Powerwalls first, as well as their premium cars like the Model S and the Model X, as they keep trying to make the range of the Model S as high as it can be. But with Battery Day only about a month away, it's best to just wait and see what they announce at Battery Day to see if it'll impact your decision of buying a Model 3 right now. Maybe we'll hear about Tesla's new battery tech and realize that it's actually a couple years away from actually making its way into the Model 3 itself, or maybe we'll realize that we should wait about six months or so and buy a Model 3 with some updated battery tech. So the current Model 3 lineup is the Standard Range Plus at $37,990 and the Long Range All Wheel Drive at $46,990 and then the Performance Model after that. The Standard Range Plus gets an EPA estimated range of 250 miles, which is actually gonna be a little bit lower than that in the real world. And then especially if you live in a colder climate, it's gonna be even lower than that. The Long Range All Wheel Drive gets an EPA a range of 322 miles with the same thing the real world is going to be a little less than that and colder climates are going to be even less than that so if range is your focus and priority here is why i do not think that you should buy a model 3 right now tesla used to make a long range rear wheel drive version of the model 3 and to this day it still gets more range than the model 3 all-wheel drive that tesla currently sells when tesla originally announced the model y back in march of 2019 they announced a long range rear wheel drive version that would get 300 miles miles of range, and at that time they said the all-wheel drive would get 280 miles of range. Well, as we now know, the rear-wheel drive version has not been made, but the all-wheel drive has, and it gets a range of 316 miles, which is 36 more miles than was originally promised. Now we didn't hear anything about the rear-wheel drive from Tesla, so we just assumed they were going to cancel it just like they did with the Model 3, but that's actually not the case. Elon took to Twitter and gave us a little bit of an update saying that the rear wheel drive version of the Model Y is actually coming and it's gonna have a range well over 300 miles and probably be about $45,000. So we haven't gotten the official numbers yet, but based on the difference between the Model 3 with all wheel drive and rear wheel drive, we're expecting the range of this rear wheel drive Model Y to be about 335 miles. And it should be coming out within the next few months and there's plenty of people that still have their pre-orders in back from March of 2019. They're waiting for this version and it is coming. So this $45,000 Model Y would be about 70% the same as the Model 3 and it would actually get more range, about 13 more miles of range, and it would be better in colder climates because it would include the heat pump and it would include all the safety improvements we've already talked about on the Model Y over the Model 3. Also, assuming that price is correct, it would be $1,990 cheaper than the all-wheel drive long-range Model 3. The only difference, of course, being that it's only rear-wheel drive. It doesn't include the front motor, so you're gonna have a reduced zero to 60 and a little bit less power. But with the higher ground clearance, a higher ride height, a fully panoramic glass roof, an automatic hatch, an incredible storage space in the Model Y, I think that you should get this rear-wheel drive Model Y instead of a Model 3. Am I allowed to say that? Now, a lot of people will probably argue that I live in California, so I don't understand why you would actually need all-wheel drive when some people do but I've talked to plenty of people who own rear wheel drive Model 3s in colder climates, and they say that the power is plenty. Also, the faster zero to 60 of the all wheel drive is definitely fun, but once you get past the initial excitement, you'll realize that in the rear wheel drive, having a five and a half second zero to 60 is plenty. And in turn, you get more range, which for most people is the most important part, especially since rear world range is gonna be less, and then battery degradation will occur over the lifetime of the car. Additionally, people will probably argue that if the rear world drive Model Y comes out before battery day, you shouldn't buy it before battery day. And I kind of agree with that as well, because we do wanna see what they're gonna announce. We have no idea if it's going to impact the Model 3 or the Model Y at this point. I personally think that they'll bring the updates to the Model 3 first, since it has already been out for about three years and the Model Y is so new, but it's entirely possible that they could update the battery tech whenever they do so on the Model 3 and the Model Y at the same time. We'll hear all the official details about that on Battery Day on September 22nd, and I'll be sure to keep you posted, so make sure you're subscribed here, and you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Ryan Shot Tech. Let's talk about when Tesla took the Model 3 infrastructure and made it into the Model Y. They made a bunch of massive improvements. The first is the rear casting assembly. In the Model 3, this rear casting is made of 70 different pieces that are all put together. Sandy Munro talked about this and talked about how they could be saving a lot of money by reducing the amount of pieces, 
And that's exactly what they did in the Model Y. The Model Y is a two-piece rear casting assembly, which makes production much easier. And soon they're gonna be moving to a one-piece casting assembly. And they're actually currently building that machine at Fremont. Now, I don't think we're gonna see this single-piece rear casting assembly on the Model 3 anytime soon. They're definitely focused on it with the Model Y for right now. But eventually when it does get added to the Model 3, it's going to add even more cost savings and bring down the cost of the Model 3. The next improvement that Tesla made on the Model Y is this front tusk that Sandy Munro discovered when he was tearing down the Model Y. Now, the Model 3 already has a perfect safety record from the NHTSA with five stars in every single category. So we expected the Model Y would be pretty similar, but with this front tusk, it looks like it actually could be safer. So in a front collision, this tusk could drastically improve the structure of the Model Y itself Again, making it even safer than the Model 3 is right now, which is five stars in every category. So this improvement could be exclusive to the Model Y, or it could be something that they add to the Model 3 over time, just like those USB-C ports. Now, of course, I know that it's a much bigger change than adding USB-C ports to the interior of the Model 3. This would be a very big change, but Tesla has been known to do these in the past. Another important improvement on the Model Y over the Model 3 is towing capacity. Now, obviously the Model Y is a bigger vehicle, so it's gonna have better towing capacity, but Tesla actually does not sell a tow hitch for the Model 3 in the United States. If you wanna get a tow hitch on your Model 3, you have to go with a third-party option, and they do a great job, but you can only tow up to 2,000 pounds. However, on the Model Y, Tesla actually sells an official tow hitch that you can get for $1,000 before delivery and it will come installed, and that has a towing capacity of 3,500 pounds. And again, similar to the Model 3, there are great third-party options that get the same towing capacity of 3,500 pounds, like the Tesla Rati Eco Hitch. So if towing is something that is important to you, you might wanna research what exactly you're gonna to be towing and decide if it's important for you to have that extra 1,500 pounds of towing capacity that you're gonna get in the Model Y over the Model 3. And if you really only wanna have an official Tesla tow hitch, you can only get that on the Model Y. Now, of course, plenty of people are gonna watch this video and then buy a Model 3 anyway, and I don't really blame you. I mean, I bought my Model Y about six months before battery day, and I took that risk, and we'll see if it pays off or not. Tesla did just drop the price of the Model 3 by about $3,000, so I don't think you have to worry about a price drop happening anytime soon, like happened to me on the Model Y. About three months after delivery, they dropped the price by about $3,000. So you don't have to worry in that regard, but I do think you should wait to hear what they're announcing on battery day. And then if the heat pump is really important because you live in a colder climate, definitely wait for that to be added to the 3 or go with the Model Y. The other improvements of the Model Y will probably come to the Model 3 over time, but might not be essential to you. But hopefully these points I laid out help you make your decision if you're deciding to buy a Model 3 or not. Again, I personally think that the rear-wheel drive version of the Model Y that's gonna be produced soon is the best option. It'll be cheaper than the long-range Model 3, it'll get more range, and it will include all of the benefits of the Model Y, as well as a much more spacious interior. Of course, I'm biased and I love my Model Y, but for this rear-wheel drive version, if you look at the numbers on paper of price and range, it really makes a lot of sense. I hope this video was helpful for you if you're deciding whether or not you should buy a Model 3 in 2020, or if you're just interested in Tesla in general. In the meantime, Time, make sure to subscribe to this channel for lots more updates about Tesla and tech and the Model Y in general like this. Make sure to like this video if you appreciated it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.